Hello, my name is Julie Cunningham and I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service here in Salt Lake City. Today I'll be going over the Utah's water outlook as of March 2024. So we'll start by taking a look at this year's precipitation thus far from October 2023 onwards. Looking at these images, the cool colors represent above normal precipitation, whereas warmer colors represent below normal precipitation. So on that left-hand image, that's the monthly precipitation for October, we saw roughly normal precipitation across the north and well below precip across the south. Moving into November in that middle image there, we saw mostly below normal precipitation across most basins. And then moving into December 2023, we did a little bit better across northeastern Utah there. We had a storm cycle that brought some atmospheric river moisture into the area and thus more precipitation. However, the rest of the areas didn't do too well that month. Moving into the new year, however, we did quite a bit better across most areas. On the left there, you can see January 2024 saw mostly around to above normal precipitation for the month. And then we did really well in February with well above normal precipitation across the entire state. Thus, looking at the right hand image there, that's the water year to date precipitation from October 1st through March 8th. We can see that northern Utah did pretty well, just above normal precipitation, whereas southern Utah is still looking at roughly below normal precip. So how does this translate to snow water equivalent or our snowpack? Well, looking at that left hand side, um, we can see that we really started the year with a feast or famine pattern with those strong increases in the orange circles, followed by quite a bit of a dry period in late December. Um, and then we saw an increased frequency of storm activity heading into midwinter, which is fairly typical of El Nino patterns. Thus, across the entire state, we're looking at roughly 123% of median snowpack. And on the right hand side, you can see most basins are looking at roughly about normal to well above normal uh, snowpack across the entire state with those green colors in the southwest around normal and the blue to darker blue seeing well above normal snowpack for this time of year. Next, looking at modeled snow water equivalent as of roughly today, we're seeing pretty decent snowpack across the entire state, especially in the mountains there. But if we compare that to last year, we saw way more widespread snowpack as of this day last year. And this is a pretty unusual, having two wet years in a row. Typically, our wet years have been followed by dry years, at least since the turn of the century. But this year, we're kind of dealing with two wet years in a row, which is going to have a really large influence on our reservoir storage. And we'll head into that next. So currently, our reservoirs are above normal for this time of year, excluding Lake Powell and Flaming Gorge. We're sitting at about 83% capacity. On the right hand side there, the blue shows a higher fill of reservoirs. So you can see across the state, our reservoirs are generally pretty full. And on the left side there, this is another way to look at our reservoir capacity over the past year. So you can see in that green line there, that's this year and the purple that's looking at last year. So last year, we were only sitting at around 50% of reservoir storage, so we're doing quite a lot better this year. Um, and we can compare that to the orange line there, which is about median. So you can see we're even really well above median reservoir storage for this time of year. This is something that we haven't seen since 2011, and even then, the year after that was pretty dry, so this is pretty unusual. Pivoting a bit to soil moisture conditions, we saw a really significant improvement in soil moisture this year or this fall due to the last year's snowpack. So on that left hand side, you can see um, soil moisture conditions for fall 2022 with the red and orange colors showing well below normal soil moisture. Compare that to this fall, fall 2023, in the middle there, you can see mostly cool colors representing above normal soil moisture. 
And then on the right side, that's the difference between 2023 and 2022 soil moisture. So that green area is really showing that increase in soil moisture, which is overall going to produce more efficient runoff this spring. So combining all of these factors together, including higher snowpack, higher reservoir levels, and higher soil moisture, we're looking at an increased water supply for the months of April through July. So this slide shows the latest official water supply forecast imagery from the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center as of March 1st. On the left there, you can see the water volume forecast for select points across Utah with cooler colors re representing above normal. You can see that across much of northern Utah. And then across the south, you can see those orange colors that's representing below normal water supply. And then on the right hand side there, you can see a table with the actual numbers for some of our higher profile watersheds representing slightly below to above normal water supply, uh, again, for the months of April through July. And our main uncertainty here is going to be future weather, since this specific forecast will greatly depend on what more precipitation that we get in the coming months. So speaking of weather, here's a look at what we can expect over the coming month. So this is the Climate Prediction Center outlook for March 2024. You can see on the left hand side there in that blue shading that's representing a higher chance of below normal temperatures, whereas on the right that strong green color represents that we're likely going to see above normal precipitation uh, again for the month of March. And then in contrast for our seasonal outlook, this is for March, April, and May of 2024, you can see northwestern Utah in that orange shading that represents leaning above for above normal temperatures. And then looking at the seasonal precipitation outlook, again for March, April, and May, we're looking at equal chances of above or below normal precipitation, so probably about normal precip. Then taking a quick look at our drought monitor, we can see most of Utah is in no or no drought or abnormally dry conditions with just that little portion of eastern Utah in that tan color representing moderate drought. And then moving forward for the next three months, here's the drought outlook. Just that same area is likely to persist in drought, whereas the rest of the area is likely to remain roughly the same. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about this Utah out water outlook, uh, feel free to reach out to one of the members of our hydrology team. You can reach us at nws.saltlakecity at noaa.gov. Thanks again.